All right, viewers, welcome back here to the Tobago of this Youth Morning Show. Now, the politics suite is a slang we oftentimes hear during election season. However, we've been hearing that slang, yet we are not in election mode. Joining us this morning to speak on some of the events that have unraveled during the past week is none other than the son of the soil, the Honorable Lawrence Hislop, a senator in Trinidad and Tobago. So good morning to you, Mr. Hislop. How are you doing? Morning, Luke. How are you doing? How are you doing? I'm, I'm doing, doing well. Good. Yes, and it's a pleasure to have you here this morning on the YouTube show. Thank you. So in the year 1980, the Tobago House of Assembly was re-established to rectify some of the discrepancies in the relationship between Trinidad and Tobago. But in the past week, we've been noticing somewhat of a bickering between the two. So before we get into this morning's conversation, I just want to ask if you a general perspective on what we've been seeing, hearing, and witnessing in the political space. Well, first of all, let me say good morning to Tobago, Trinidad and Tobago, and, and the wider world who may be who may be tuned in. Um, I, I like the word, I don't like the word bickering mm -hmm. um, because I don't, think, I don't think there is bickering. I, I, I think um, politics is, is, is about positioning, is about um, service, or it should be about service first. Um, and so when you have a challenge, when you have a situation where two opposing parties in our structure um, is, is in governance, one in Tobago and one in Trinidad. Um, you would not, things may not always go as smoothly as you would like it to. Um, there will always be, even in, even in common relationships, you always find the challenge that, um, as the old people say, Tita and Dong will meet at times. Uh, but it's how you navigate around those situations that makes mm. the difference. And um, What's happening in, the, in, the, in, in, in Tobago and Trinidad and Tobago is in some regard unfortunate um, because I honestly don't see the need for any quote-unquote bickering. Um, but uh, some powers that be think that it is necessary for them to bicker, but I, I, I don't see the need for the bickering. Okay, great. Now, the title for today's segment, Mr. Hislop, is, um, you know, Mind Your Business. And that came <laughs> from a campaign video that would have resurfaced on social media yeah. um, with the Honorable Dr. Keith Rowley. Um, and it was reposted by the Chief Secretary, that's yeah. Mr. Fali Augustine, on his personal Facebook page. So we are seeing it up here on the screen now. And for those of you who are who may be confused as to what the video is saying, we're going to play the video and then we'll get into the... Um, to the question on the matter. I am not involved in your business. As Prime Minister, I stay out of Tobago's business. The law keeps me out. I have a responsibility as head of the cabinet, and then I am out of your business. Tobago's business is run at the administrative level by the Tobago House of Assembly. It is the only place in this country where I am Prime Minister, where there is an executive body running the affairs of that part of the country. And you all better understand that. Now, the interesting thing about this video, more specifically what the Chief Secretary would have reposted, mm -hmm. is that we live in Trinidad and Tobago, and a lot of people are saying, you know, we know Dr. Rowley and we know him to be a person. When it comes to his interaction and, exchange, and exchanges with people, it's not really on the respectful spectrum. People may see the way he deals with people as, quote-unquote, disrespectful. So now we find ourselves in a do-so, don't-like-so situation, and the question now people are asking is, why is it now that the Chief Secretary is being crucified for something that, you know, Dr. Rowley himself is oftentimes excused for? Well, I, I, don't, I don't think it's, it's, it's excused. And, and if, as you played the video, we ought to play the video in context. Mm -hmm. Because, because what what the chief secretary and, and his, his friends have done is to take out a particular line and use it out of context. Because I was sitting at that meeting. That meeting was actually um, during the election in the Masonal meeting. And what the prime minister, the point the prime minister was making is that when it comes to the administration of Tobago, the, 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 there are constraints legally. And so he says in the governance of Tobago, in the administration of Tobago, the law does not allow the prime minister to interfere in the governance of Tobago, right? But that does not negate the fact that the prime minister is still the prime minister of Trinidad and Tobago. And so he has 
the, the, the authority given to him by the Constitution of, of Trinidad and Tobago to speak on matters as it relates or, or, or speak on matters that affect Tobago. And so, and so for persons to say, or as the Chief Secretary did, still, to, still, still well, mind your damn business, mm -hmm. that is being disrespectful in the context of the Prime Minister speaking on matters that are treating. Because listen, I'm a citizen of Trinidad and Tobago, I'm not a citizen of Tobago. I reside in Tobago, and every one of us who reside in Tobago, what, what do our ID cards and passports and so on say? You are a citizen of Trinidad and Tobago. And so whether you like the prime minister or not, when he stands up to speak, he speaks on behalf of Trinidad and Tobago because he's the prime minister of Trinidad and Tobago. The governance construct of him to get involved in the day-to-day -day operations of the governance of the island of Tobago. But at the end of the day, when, when Dr. Rowley steps on our platform, when he steps out of, of Trinidad and Tobago, who does he represent? Trinidad. You may not like him, you may not have voted for him, but at the end of the day, he is the person tasked with the responsibility to represent Trinidad and Tobago. And great, yeah. Senator. And um, you would have said that he speaks on issues affecting both Trinidad and Tobago, yeah. and he would have done a, done a press release, a really long, nicely structured press release, and then we saw again that it was being misconstrued in a manner of speaking. Mm -hmm. And then the question came up now in the Tobago space is, did we vote for party or did we vote for people? Because we are now in a circumstance where the independent representatives, they were members of the PDP, mm -hmm. they would have campaigned on issues affecting Tobago, and then um, some were removed and then the other resigned themselves from the party and now they were independents. But they formed a new political party and the question now is, with the formation of the new political party, the mandate is now coming into play. Are they going to use the old mandate? Um, I think Max James would have said that the mandates still can be used because it's still the same people. <laughs> um, they did not quote unquote change. Mm -hmm. Farley is still Farley, the independents are still the independents. But from a political perspective, this is a new party. They are no they no longer identify as the PDP. So the question now is, is that the main reason why a fresh election may have to be called? Because they obviously can't use the mandate they use when they were under the PDP banner. Let me let, let's take it let's take it from this perspective. And I'm I'm not here to quote sections of, of of acts and constitutions. We're dealing with, with, with direct talk. Mm -hmm. Let's take it from this, from this perspective, from a governance perspective. You know, this is, this, this, if this happened on the national level, this would have been considered political instability. If this happened from, from the national government, let's say, for instance, um, the PNM was voted into office in Trinidad, mm -hmm. in Trinidad and Tobago. And not even a year into the term of office. Now, we understand that the law is different as it relates to what governs the THG and what governs the parliament, right? But let's just, let's just put that aside for one minute. If this happened in Trinidad, it would be considered political instability. And when you have political instability within a country, how, how, do, you, how do you think your trading partners and your your allies see you. Okay. They see you as 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 unstable. They see you as a as a as a people who can't manage. And so when you take that into the context of what is happening in Tobago, granted that the THA Act allows for it. And 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 truth be told, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a unique perspective of, the, of, of, of governance in the world. But something like this doesn't augur well for governance. Your sister, your, you look unstable, your governance structure looks unstable, and, and, and the, business, the business entities within, your, within your, your governance space, they don't take you seriously. And so investment is stymied. Because if we can't trust, or, 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 if we, or if we see instability in the political element of a, of, of, of a country, of an island, 
then, then, then business is stymied because people are afraid to invest. Mm -hmm. Because we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Because that's what we faced with. Whether, whether, the, whether the independents remain in the executive council, we don't know what's going to happen in the morning. Because the truth be told, they, they, they won the election. Because you could go into the, into the records of the, of the EBC. What do the records say? Mm -hmm. The records say that Fali Augustine, Zia Hackett, won the election under what? PDP. Under a PDP ticket. And so if you've won, the, if you came to the people under the banner of the PDP, these people did not campaign individually. And, and, and let, me, let me say to the citizens of Toronto and Tobago, we, the PNM is not afraid of elections. From its inception, the PNM has contested every election and every seat that has been held in this country. And so, and so it's not about the PNM being afraid of elections. Because if an election is called tomorrow, the PNM will go back to the polls tomorrow. And if the people give, the, the, whoever the people gives the mandate, the PNM will do what it has to do. Whether it is in government, or in opposition. And so, and so the issue here is about the stability of the governance of an island. OK. And um, you would have mentioned that you know the government structure that we are seeing yeah. in Tobago you now, it's somewhat of an unstable nature. And um, some political analysts had some ways to describe the governance we are seeing here in Tobago, and, and they would have used the word political mediocrity. Mm -hmm. So that is described, we put it up on the screen for those um, for um, those viewing, you know, political mediocrity, it is described as engaging in populism. That is a political stance that emphasizes the idea of the people and often juxtapose this group against the quote-unquote elite rather than standing up for principles, governing, and solving problems. And this political mediocrity is reinforced by mediocrity. That is a situation in which the media dominates or controls the populace. This is in terms of voting. So my question to you, Senator, is that based on the comments the analysts, the, an the analysts would have made, do you think that we are seeing that type of governance here in Tobago now? Well, I could ask you the question. You tell me. Because coming from... <laughs> I know you're the host. Mm -hmm. but, but I think we've seen worse than that. Okay. I think, I think we've seen governance that is, that, that, is, that, is, that is falling apart. People are, people are holding on to governance because the, a law allows them to, okay. and not because they have a clear mandate from the people. Because, because you look, how do you govern? You govern with a mandate. And, and if, if you are to be taken, and I know persons took this statement and blew it out of context, but Dr. Oli said, if you are to be taken seriously. But we're not even talking about about, about the central government taking you seriously. I just spoke about, about business people. Because, because no businessman worth his salt could be comfortable with, 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 with what is being, what's, what's happening in Tobago. Because you never know if we're coming or going, and no businessman who's worth his salt, who's been profitable, could be happy with a, with, with a, with a system that doesn't know where, whether it's coming or going. OK. And um, you would have noted that Mr. Rowley's statements have been blown out of proportion once again. And you know, you would have said to call the election. These are three words we've been hearing in both Trinidad and Tobago. Call the elections. We're hearing it at a local government level. We're hearing it in general elections. And most notably, we heard it from Dr. Rowley in terms of calling the THA elections. But people are somewhat confused as to why he's saying call the elections when local, the local um, elections haven't even been called. So do you think it's somewhat hypocritical for Dr. Rowley to instruct or somewhat suggest that, mm -hmm. you know, the THA call the election while he still has, you know, elections that are in limbo in Trinidad? I don't, I, I don't, see, I don't see elections in Trinidad as being in limbo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there, there, are there, there are legal guidelines for calling the election in Trinidad, and mm -hmm. the election will be called. I don't think Look at Dr. Rowley's record since he's been, he's been Prime Minister. I don't think anybody could say that Dr. Rowley is afraid to call an election. Okay. Um, I, I, think, I think Dr. Rowley relishes fighting elections. I think he enjoys fighting elections, as all politicians do. So, so there isn't an issue about him calling elections in Trinidad. You, so, so this is what I want to see. I want to see when he does call a local government election, which he will call. Because there are, there, are, there are legal guidelines to when it is to be called. 
Mm. When it calls the local government elections, then what leg do our friends in Tobago have to stand on to say, well, call the election in Trinidad before you call for elections in Tobago? You see, yes, the person who has the authority to trigger elections in Tobago is the chief secretary. That's a given, right? We understand that. But the PNM has the right to call for elections. Because the PNM is standing on a position of morality as it deals with the governance. In the same way, the same way when, when things happen in, in, in Trinidad and Tobago, the opposition calls for, for, for elections. The opposition was in the Senate yesterday, the, the opposition is calling for elections every day. All right? And so and so the Dr. Rowley will call the elections in Trinidad within the legal framework of when elections are to be called. And they will be called, they will be contested. And Senator Hizlop, that brings another question we hear on the ground in terms of morality. Mm -hmm. You know, people will view it as, okay, the PNM was in power in Tobago for 21 years. Um, they would have apparently failed on the job. That's why the Tobago people would have voted for something different. So people will ask the question, you know, what right, what moral ground does the PNM has to even, you know, provoke, try to um, provoke an election, try to call an election, what moral ground does the PNM have to, you know, say these things and, you know, call an election? Here is about 15,000 people that voted for the PNM, right? Okay. And so, and so that gives the PNM right there the moral authority to call for elections. Okay, the numbers. The people, that, the people who support the PNM, the people who voted for the PNM. And so, and I, and, and I hear this narrative, we, we, this narrative has been beaten from, from here to whenever, about the 21 years in, 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 in office. The reality is that the people of Tobago voted back in the PNM consecutively. That's why, that's why the PNM governed for 21 years. We got to a point where the people said, we need a change. And that's fair. That's what democracy is about. And so the PLM fought the election, lost the election, and went into opposition. The, 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 we are no strangers to opposition. Because the PLM has been here from, from, the, from the birth of this country and will continue to be here and has proven over the years that we are the best option. Because whenever, whenever there is a falling out, the disagreement to the PNM. Mm -hmm. Now you vote out the PNM. What happens after that? After the five-year term of a government that came in, that replaced the PNM, what happened? <laughs> Senator, and um, I think this is, would have been a question more fitting to ask the Prime Minister himself. Mm -hmm. But the question is now, you know, um, explain the legal time that has passed and it was delayed for the local election. And um, they are saying that, you know, a complaint often time was raised by the UNC if the time has, quote unquote, passed for the local election. No, no, no. You remember, remember that there is local government reform that was passed. Mm -hmm. um, what transpired is that part of that legislation was proclaimed, which, which allowed for an additional year. Right? Because within that, that, that legislation, the local government reform now moves the term to four years. And so, and so that, triggered, that triggered that aspect of it. So it's not that, it's not that the, the prime minister isn't breaking the law because, because that matter was challenged in court and it failed in court because the, part, the, the, the legislation was partially proclaimed to allow for, for other frameworks to be built out within the local, local government construct. And so it allowed for this additional period. But when, that, when the time, listen, let's just wait and see. The elections will be called, the elections will be contested. And, and the government is not breaking the law with regards to local government. OK, so yeah. Senator, you're on the youth show, and um, you will need to give that youth perspective in terms of when it comes to Tobago's autonomy. And building our achieving an autonomous Tobago is not a newly debated topic. Yeah. It's a topic that has been debated for a while. I remember, I think it was in 2015, the then chief secretary, I think, was Orville London. Um, he would have 
taken a team to Trinidad. They would have visited um, Kamala Pusabisesa. She was in power at that time mm -hmm. to discuss the autonomy bill. And um, they would have said that the central government wasn't so enthusiastic about it. But when you look at autonomy, I think from my perspective is that Tobago will have to have its own resources, socially, um, financially also. And you would have said that business investors, who are probably the people who could help achieve this, they are looking on and seeing what is happening in Tobago in terms of the political climate. So my question is, with all that's been happening and all that's been going on, do you still think that Tobago's autonomy can still be achieved? Hmm. That's, a, that's, a, that's a loaded question. Um, I, I believe that Tobago's autonomy can be achieved. I would like Tobago's autonomy to be achieved. Um, it's unfortunate that we did not allow that to take place with the legislation that is still in committee stage in the parliament. Um, and interestingly, up to yesterday, I was speaking to, to um, a senior public servant who would have worked on that piece of legislation and the work that went into it. And um, the, the public servant was, was confident that Tobago would have been better off with that piece of legislation. And, and it's unfortunate that persons with voices in Tobago didn't say to the opposition, we want, we, we're going to support this. Because, because legislations are living and breathing entities. I, you can't, I, I don't think you could have a perfect legislation. There is, there is always going to be area, gray areas and ambiguities within, within legislation. And so what happens is that, and especially when you allow the legislation to go through the committee stage, that's where you have significant amendments and meaningful amendments taking place. I, I, I tell you, if that, if that had gone to the Senate, and you had the input of the independent senators, um, the, the, you, you would find that you would have additional amendments that would, that would make the legislation more robust, that would make the legislation more, more meaningful. But what I'm saying is that we missed an opportunity. We missed an opportunity. You know? and, and there's so many opportunities that we would have missed in Tobago because of, of those who shout the loudest. And the truth is, those who shout the loudest don't always talk what makes sense. And so we had shouting, especially, you know, I, I, I saw recently the announcement by St. Vincent and the Grenadines about the sandals and the beaches. Mm -hmm. and, and, and other islands could see the benefit of it, but we, we missed an opportunity there. And, and, and so we worry about our tourism numbers. And, and people may say, well, Sanders wasn't the panacea of it, but, but it was an element that could have brought value to our tourism product. And so I believe we could still get autonomy. I believe we still deserve our autonomy um, or greater autonomy. Um, but could you, could you imagine us having greater autonomy? with what's taking place in Tobago right now. Mm. Because, because with that level of, of power, with what the present administration is engaging in, I don't know, I don't know what would have happened to Tobago. Because, because, because you have secretaries talking about the Tobago government, and even commentators are talking about the Tobago government. But within that legislation, Tobago was going to be given its Tobago Island government. That is what the THA was going to move from. And then on top of that, the, 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 it would have been enshrined in the Constitution. Because as it stands now, it, it, it takes a simple majority to dissolve the THA. How, how, how powerful is that entity if, if the, the national parliament could just wake up one morning and say, well, we're dissolving the THA? <laughs> Well, and a so. simple majority could vote and dissolve the THA. I know it's going to cause riots in Tobago, and I would not support that. But the reality is, that is what, or that's where we are as a THA. And the present central government was willing to move us from that to something greater. And the noises in Tobago said that's not what we want. And so the opposition just quickly jumped on that and started to to, to, to suffocate the process. 
Okay. okay, send it on. I, I never looked at it from that perspective, yeah. to be honest. And um, the noises, you know, we are seeing the noises, you know, Trinidad, Tobago, Trinidad, Tobago, and we're noticing somewhat of a Trinidad versus Tobago happening or can happen. Mm. What do you think that this back and forth between the two islands, how is that going to affect us soci like socially? Um, I know most of our tourism, the Trinidadians, they come over, they are really a Tobago in tourism. So this, these noises, how do you think it's going to affect the stability of the relationship between the two islands? I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to forecast anything. Um, I, but it is not, the, 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 the conversation is not a good conversation. This, this, this Trinidad versus Tobago conversation is not a good conversation. You, you look around the world and you are seeing, you're seeing territories and countries seeking to come together, seeking to build alliances, and, and we, have, we want to be fighting each other. 1.1 point, what? 4 million people want to fight each other and talk about why the water belongs to us and all of this. And, and let's take into consideration if every, if every community in Trinidad that contributed to the national economy, let's just say point fourteen said it, that we want everything that comes from Atlantic energy. Do you think we would have gotten some of the things that we have in Tobago? Point, if, if Coover, Point Lisa's area says, all the companies that reside in the Point Lisa's estate, all those taxes must stay in Trinidad, must stay in Coover. How does that affect the national development? I'm a, I'm a, I'm a citizen of Trinidad and Tobago. I'm a Trinbegonian. Mm -hmm. I was born here, I love Tobago with, with my all. But I think the, 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 the rhetoric of Trinidad versus Tobago needs to stop. What we need to really and truly have a conversation about is, 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 is how are we seen as equal partners? And I think the, 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 the Tobago Autonomy Bill was taking us in that direction. You know, the thing about it is that if we separate, because I hear people talking about secession. Mm -hmm. If we separate, do you know who benefits out of that secession? Not, not Tobago, you know. Not Trinidad and Tobago. You know. Barbados benefits out of that secession. Okay. We end up losing. And, and, and we, may, we may think that we will, be, we, we will be better off. But there needs to be a conversation amongst our people not in politicians, you know, because sometimes the politicians just throw all kind of mess <laughs> in the mix. But our people, the regular citizen on the ground, how do you feel about your relationship as a, as a how, do you feel, how do you feel as it relates to your citizenship of Trinidad and Tobago? Okay. I'm, about, I'm about bringing us into equal partnership. I'm not about secession. But Max James would have described himself as a secessionist, and he would have advocated ruthlessly for the Tobago autonomy. So what are your thoughts on that entire interview? Because he would have advocated ruthlessly that, listen, Tobago, you know, they need to cut away from Trinidad. What were your thoughts on that interview? That's Max James' view. Mm -hmm. I don't share his view. Um, we are gone past that 90s style of politics. I think we need, we need to recognize that the world is moving towards amalgamation. The world is moving towards better relationships. Okay. Why, why, why should we be carrying on a conversation? And, and what made it worse is, 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 is the nonsense talk about, about him wanting to, to send a picture of, 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 of Tobago and, and Dr. Rowley Sheep Farm. Max James has an issue with Dr. Rowley Sheep Farm. The, and that is the level of, that is the level of, of, of small-mindedness, and I'm, going to use, I'm not going to use any big words, that, that's the level of small-mindedness that comes from commentators in, in, in Tobago. That, that, that because the Prime Minister made a comment, you're talking about when the man dies and all of that kind of nonsense. Why, why, why are we even getting there? We, we should be talking about strengthening relationships and making sure that our relation, we can carry come. And as a senior public servant said to me yesterday, well, if we decide on secession, the United Nations has to get involved in all of those kind of things because we now become a small island mm -hmm. state and, and, and all the ramifications that goes with that. And we end up losing. 
We are better off when we stand together. And this fight, this fight, you know, I, 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 I speak to some, some of us on a, on a trip recently, having a conversation with some CARICOM, um, CARICOM members, and they're trying to figure out why, why all of this contention in Trinidad? Why are we fighting amongst ourselves? And this is not me. Hmm. So if our CARICOM neighbors are wondering why we fight in between Trinidad and Tobago, why, why should we continue to? Oh, wow, Senator, it's, it's really good to know that perspective. Because when you look from a youthful perspective again, they say in January we would have had CYLS, that's a Caribbean, where different youth leaders from the Caribbean yeah. meet up. And um, we would have known known of each other separately, you know, from social media. Yeah. And then we joined up and we realized we were able to network, we were able to build relationships, and we were able to push our youth agenda in a more effective way. So when you talk about, you know, it, now is not the time to divide. You know, we, we understand that, that perspective because we've seen it right here in the youth space. We've seen it right here with our youth leaders. So the question now is, as a senator, what do you post to do differently? What, what, what can the PNM do differently? Um, yeah, what are the thoughts? What are the I, thoughts? I, I think conversation is, is always conversation into action and, and, and meaningful conversation. Um, I honestly, honestly believe that Tobago needs to do a lot of introspection. Okay. And, and we need to ask ourselves, um, how, how do we benefit out of a union with, with, with our sister, Trinidad? What are, the, what are the pros and the cons? How do we have that conversation that allows us to... to because, because we've benefited, you know, and, and if the Begonians are honest with themselves, we have benefited. We've benefited out of the union. And... How? How have how we benefited? You, you, know, people, you know, we have to ask the question, how? We just can't say you benefited. Right, so, yeah. so, how have we benefited? So, so, so we talk about... We talk about about simple things like the, like, and I, I wouldn't even say simple because it's a significant capital expenditure. Okay. Um, I remember the days I running on the Panorama and the MV Tobago. Remember when I was in Trinidad studying that, that was my modus operandi every weekend. And, and because of our, of our partnership, of our, of our relationship, of our unitary state construct with, 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 with Trinidad, we were able to see our, our, I, I was able to see our entire land ferry service move from there to where it is. Um, students who have been able to, to, to access um, gate and all of these kinds of things. Some of the same people that are making noise have benefited from direct p and policy, b direct policy because we are a unitary state. And because we are together, it gives us, it gives us that economies of scale in terms of value for money and so on. I am not saying that the, that the arrangement is perfect. There, there, are, there are several things that need to be sorted out that have not been sorted out, and several governments have been in place to do that. You know, we talk about the PNM not being the ones to give autonomy. We, we, had, we had a great leader in, in, in our Robinson who had, the, who had a constitutional majority. The TOP was part of a construct under the People's Partnership that had a constitutional majority that had the ability at that time to give Tobago complete autonomy. And it didn't happen. And it came to, it, 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 the, the PNM brought, Dr. Rowley brought these bills to the floor of the parliament. And we made noise about it and struck it down, right? We, we, the, the, all of the infrastructure works that, are, that have taken place, infrastructure, people development, social development that has taken place on this island that every resident of Tobago has benefited from, has done that because we are, we are Trinidad and Tobago. Everything that we've benefited from. Okay, so it's not perfect, but if we really see the glass half full instead of half empty, and the people of the residents of Tobago who have benefited from direct government intervention would see that those benefits that they have acquired, accrued, are because we are Trinidad and Tobago. Okay, Senator. Really good perspective. Really good perspective with you know maintaining that relationship. But time is of the essence. So closing now, what are some words you would like to leave to the Tobago nuns here to you know just wrap things up nicely? No, I for me, I, I want us to have meaningful conversations. 
I, I, I'm, I think, I think the, the, the political space is, is tired of the arguments. I, we need to have meaningful conversations, conversations that redound to the benefit of Trinidad and Tobago and Tobago in its, in its, in its nuclei. We, we, we need that sort, we need those sort of conversations. We, we don't need the, the back and forth and the arguments and, and, and take out your officers from Tobago. The reality is that the, the, the licensing officers are paid by the ministry. And on that topic of the licensing officers, it brings me to question what different policies, if any, it has between the Trinidad licensing and Tobago licensing. Are there any differences? It's the, it's the same policy. Okay. The, the only difference is that the administrative aspect of the licensing office is managed by, mm -hmm. by, by, by the THA. But who pays the licensing officers, even those based in Tobago? Okay. The salaries of those officers are paid by the ministry. What, 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 what I could, what I could, if, 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 if conversation is to be had, then let the, but let there be meaningful conversation. We, we ought not to be fighting. Let's not fight amongst each other. Okay, Senator. So I'd like to really thank you for joining us here this morning on the Tobago Updates Youth Morning Show. You know, some people are even questioning, are you even going to be our prospective candidate for Tobago East? I think it's too early to ask, but people are wondering. Are you going to be a prospective I'm candidate? A senator of, I'm a senator in the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. Okay, great. All right? The only person who holds the future is God. And we leave that, we leave that, we leave that right there. All right, Senator. So thank you once again for joining us here on the YouTube show. You know, show the interview there were many times I wanted to interject, but um, I always tell management, you know, if they want us to have that conversation, let's have a debate. And, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think um, that type of conversation is fitting for you could, an interview. You could, you could have it detected, but I don't have a problem with it. Okay, you well, next yeah. time I'll know to, you know, be ruthless with, <laughs> with, with the interview. No so, problem. I want to thank you once again, Senator, for joining us this morning, for sharing your perspective on what's been happening in the political space. So, viewers, that was Senator the Honorable Lawrence Sizzler. Um, Don't go anywhere yet. Remember to share the live, share the live, share the live. We'll be right back to highlight what happened over the jazz weekend. <laughs>